Hey guys, exciting news today. The main cell team has released main cell 2.0 and it's ready in a better version for you to try and test. So if you want to be part of the party, this video is for you. Stay tuned. So I am really happy to be collaborating with the main cell team. They've done a really, really awesome job of uh, updating that interface, which was already awesome, but they, they, they put it to another level again. So really, thank you guys on the main cell team. Really fantastic to have you guys there. Um, version 2.0, if you are interested in, it's a better release, so it's not a fully stable release yet, but it will be as more people get on there and test it. So we need your help to go install that, test it, report any issues or bug uh, to the main cell team. And I'm going to show you that later on the video where you can report your issues if you encounter any. I didn't have any issues yet, but if you do, this is why the beta is a beta. So we need your help on this one. So if you want to upgrade, the easiest way is first to get your Moonraker updated to the latest version. So we're going to do that. And why is that is because the latest or one of the latest release of Moonraker now allows you to specify or to change a, um, a branch for updating. This is the update manager and the latest Moonraker allows you to change um, what you have in the repo. So uh, easiest way to, to, to get access to 2.0 is to edit your Moonraker config file. And you can do that from the main cell interface, which is really easy to do. So you open your moonraker.conf and all you have to do is to change um, the repo here. And instead of web, uh, I think you just, uh, let me just uh, confirm that real quick. Instead of web, you just add underscore beta and you save and restart moonraker. Try again. And then you launch a scan to check if there's going to be any new updates. And it should find out uh, main cell 2.0. So that's the easiest way to do that. Here you go. As you can see, it found 2.00 beta. So we're just going to update it. And it shouldn't be too long because it's super lightweight. And there you go. As you can see at the bottom, we are now running version 2.0. And we're going to take a quick tour on, on what's new in this new release. And if you get that error message at the top, um, it's an easy fix. Uh, it's just that you need to remove or comment out that section in the authorization section. Uh, let's just do that real quick. In that moonraker.configuration, just put a, um, uh, not a dash, a, uh, well, this sign there. Don't know how to call that in English. I think the pound sign or whatever you call that. And then uh, hit save and restart, but also make sure that you have this guy here. It doesn't need any setting. It just needs to be there. That's going to enable a, a new tab uh, into main cell. Uh, if you don't have it yet, then just add it. If you have it, then you're good to go. So save and restart. That history tab is right there. We're going to come back. Uh, we're going to come back to that later. So now what's new in that new release? Uh, a lot of cool stuff has happened. Basically, they have reworked the entire um, interface. It's more snappy, feels more, more performance as well. Um, so that's what you get. So um, first thing that you'll notice, there is that new little guy top right. Um, this is the setting panel or the interface settings. Uh, remember before it was, it was also, uh, in the left pane here where you have machine and interface settings. Now they've put the interface settings right here, makes it more convenient. I think it's a better way to do it. So, um, in general, you'll see your, your, your use, uh, your normal stuff. We can just name that printer. If you wish, it's going to uh, show up at the top, uh, the language. There's a new thing here, large thumbnail instead of small, you can switch back and forth. Um, when you print and you use the, uh, the thumbnail for what you print on the STL, you can show a big or a small one and your normal stuff, the display cancel print. Um, theme is also there by default. You can change the colors. Uh, you need to enable the webcam if you do have a webcam. 
Um, and this is where you can enable or disable your macros. Uh, if you disable them, you won't see them here under the dashboard. So um, all the macros you don't really need or use that are not useful on the dashboard, remove them. It takes extra space. You don't need them. Um, console, um, show the dashboard, the console on the dashboard. I like that enable is going to put something right here so you can input your commands right there instead of going to the console tab. And I suggest you hide the temperature messages sent by the printer. It's just annoying. Okay. You can also create your, your preheat, uh, presets right here. And you still have that remote printer option available there. Um, on the main dashboard, what you're also going to notice uh, is the fact that the Sentinel, the filament sensor, uh, is now on the main dashboard instead of being under the machine. So right here, you can enable and disable that. And you'll find all your, your sliders for your fans and, and whatnot. Um, new stuff, which is really, really awesome, is now you have the possibility to use the tab key to the autocomplete. Uh, so if you start typing uh, the beginning of a command and then hit tab, it's going to list all the available command that you can use with that function. So really cool stuff. If you type help, it's going to list uh, all the commands that you can run, including your macros. So the autocomplete is just really, really cool stuff. Um, and I think you have the command list as well if you click on that little sign. But if you type help and, and run, that's also going to list that. Um, and that's about it for the main dashboard. Webcam has stayed the same. The console here, same thing. You can autocomplete stuff. Um, G-code files, same thing as before. Um, you can filter stuff and search through your G-code. Now, in their history tab, there is another cool feature. Um, you can now uh, set and search with filters. So here's what you can input there. They're all there, so use the one that you like. Um, so it's going to list all your, 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 um, your print jobs and, and the statistic that comes with them. Really cool stuff. And then uh, into the machine settings, uh, New feature here, you see the system loads. So now you see the uh, the MCU on the Raspberry Pi. You see the MCU, which is your 3D printer board. Uh, that is only if you use the, the, the Raspberry Pi as a MCU. You'll see the load there and the load on the actual Raspberry Pi main uh, um, CPU. You'll see the load here. Um, and what... Else, I mean, that's about it. Some other cool stuff that you see uh, on the dashboard. If I'm right, uh, where is it? You see, um, yeah, under the machine. You will see also um, if there is a, a throttle issue, like if you don't have enough voltage or current, or if there's an overheating issue, you're going to get an, a new error message. And also if the... Um, the printer loses connection. Now you get another nice. So let, for instance, if you restart Moonraker, this is what you get now. Um, new status for the error message that you can see there. Same thing if you restart the, the firmware. You can also now restart the Clipper MCU directly from there, which is a new feature as well. I think it was not there before. Another change that you will notice is when you edit your, your config file. Uh, this is a brand new file editor. It, it's smaller. I think it's more convenient. So they've changed that uh, a bit. So that is also better. Uh, if you do a, a search, it's now going to be at the bottom of the screen. So very nice looking uh, interface there. So if you go to docs.mainsell.xyz, in the theming section, you'll see community themes, uh, themes, and there are three themes already. This one looks pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm going to plan to add my own theme in there so people can can use that. But there are already a couple themes, and this this list will build up with times as people uh, create themes. It uses CSS um, as a standard, so that's easy to modify. So this is where you will find that. Yeah, so that, that's about it. But the entire interface feels more 
uh, responding, if I can say it that way. So feel free to download it, use it. And if you have any issues, I'll show you where to report the, the bugs that you're fine. You're, you're going you're to find to the main cell team, which is going to be really appreciated. They do that for free. So keep that in mind and be, uh, <laughs> be respectful and gentle with them. If you find issues, then please help them and they're going to be happy to fix them. So now that you're running main cell 2.0, if you find any bugs, issues, or anything weird happening on the interface, uh, the main cell team would like to have you report any issues that you get. And, and to do that, they would like to have it on the Discord uh, server that they have. And you're going to find a bug reports beta. Don't use the bug reports. This is for the main branch version. This is for the new 2.0 beta version. So if you find issues, bugs, Go there, report them to the developers. Um, they will be very happy and they will try to fix the issues that you get. So everyone will benefit from that. So it's a community work. So everyone is welcome to participate, which makes it an awesome project. Again, thank you very much and I appreciate that you watched it. Go nuts, print some crazy stuff. And on this, have a great night.